So why is it that amateur golfers tend to be good with their irons, but they struggle when it comes to the driver? Now, the answer is actually quite simple. If we just take a look at the makeup of these two clubs, we can see one of the biggest differences is the length of shaft. And an iron shaft, this is an eight iron here, is considerably shorter than a driver shaft. Now, the second thing we've then got to look at is, okay, how is that going to affect the swing? And also, where are we hitting these two shots? So if I set up to the golf ball right here with both of these clubs and get the button of the grip roughly in the same spot, what do we notice is the biggest difference? It's the swing plane. It's the plane of how these shafts are sat. An iron shaft is a lot steeper. So you can see it's a lot more vertical. A driver shaft is a lot flatter. This therefore means that the iron wants to be swung a lot more up and down to match that steeper swing plane. Versus a driver, because it's a longer shaft, it's gonna have a flatter swing plane. This is gonna to wanna to be more around our body. Now also, let's look at how these balls are positioned. An iron is off the ground, so we need to be able to hit down on this to compress it. To be able to hit ball, then ground, compress it. Again, that's gonna lend itself to a steeper swing. However, a driver is teed up nice and high, and we're able to swing more around us, have a neutral to slightly positive angle of attack, and that's very much a shallower action. So where amateurs get in trouble is they're great with this, they're great in producing that steeper swing plane. However, when it comes to the driver, they do the same thing. They swing it very much up and down. They hit down on the ball a lot. They might sky it. You're gonna see very spinny, unpredictable ball flights. It's gonna be hard to be efficient. This is also why amateur golfers tend to be better with three wood, because again, you can hit down on a three wood because a lot of the time we're hitting it off a low tee or even off the ground. So how is it that we can actually produce this shallow motion? Well, first of all, there are a lot of tiny set up adjustments that to be honest most of the time amateurs don't even realize are going on that are going to help you swing a little bit more around you and the first one is obviously due to the length of shaft you're going to be further away from the ball second of all you're going to tend to find amateurs are going to be a little bit more upright with a driver than with an iron so then from there you just want to have those sensations of just allowing yourself to swing down the shaft plane line but just by thinking going okay well actually i just need to recognize i need to swing a little bit more around me can do so much of the heavy lifting you do not need to have have these complicated swing thoughts. Now, if that's not enough, then we can jump into the next phase, which is understanding your setup and your forearms just a little bit more. So here's how we understand the setup and the forearms a little bit more. Often, and this is very, very common, I see amateur golfers set up like this when it comes to driver. So what's happening here is their trail arm is higher than their lead arm. We see the shoulders point to the left, and from the front of view, you see the spine angle lean towards the target. Now, from this position, if my shoulders are pointing this way, it is going to promote an out-to-in steeper swing, which is not what we want to see. What we want to be seeing is at address, we can actually close the shoulders off and drop the trail arm lower. So it's, it's softly folded as if that elbow is just gently tucking into the body. And we can see here the top of the left forearm above the right forearm right there. Now, again, this can be a little bit tricky to find. So here's a really simple exercise you can do to help you find this position. So what I want you to do is find something that resembles a steering wheel. So you've got a cone here, find a plate, a frisbee, anything. And what I want you to do is just hold this out in front of you just like so. Now from there, turn this as if you were turning it to about one o'clock on a clock face. And if I do it from this angle, so I turn it to about one o'clock on a clock face, and so now my thumbs are pointing in that direction, and then I bend over, what's now happened to my hands? You can see it's promoted this position to where the right arm is lower than the left arm at address. Now, if I grab a club and I just rest this on my hip and I do that same feeling, turn it to one o'clock, drop this and grab the club, you can see how straight away that promotes this position to where I have some spine tilt from the front on view. My trail arm is lower. It's a lot softer as well. And from here, if I do that, we are gonna be in the best possible position to now wanna swing around ourselves a lot more. And again, the biggest, biggest checkpoint from the downline view, and if you cannot see this, you're not doing it right. It's as simple as that, is if you have a good camera angle from the downline view, and you cannot see any of your left forearm above your right forearm, and in fact, you can see it below, you're doing this wrong. You need to be able to see, oh, the ball's falling off the tee, you need to be able to see the top of the forearm above the right forearm. If you can do that, then you're gonna be in a much better position to swing around your body. On a quick side note, if you are enjoying this video, then please give the video a like and also subscribe to the channel. It's a small app, but it makes my day and it makes the world a difference. So now we've set up in that position, we are promoting a flatter plane. Now it's time to give you a drill and therefore a swing thought that is going to help you achieve this more rounded 
golf swing. So here you can see I've set up a phenomenal drill that is gonna force you into the right position. So what I've done here is I've gotten creative. I've essentially gaffer taped two alignment sticks together to get them at this angle. Now, how have I set this drill up? So what I've done is I've positioned the tip of the alignment stick about one club head width outside of the golf ball, and then I've placed it so at left arm parallel, it's about halfway down my lead forearm. Now, in terms of the angle of the alignment stick, you can see that it's roughly going through the top of my shoulder. Now, here's why this drill is phenomenal, because as I swing, if I do a good golf swing, I should never, ever touch this alignment stick. I should be able to swing underneath it, around me, back underneath, and all the way through, and hit just these awesome, unreal, around me golf swings, high draws that are just gonna be phenomenal. And you're gonna find that also your spin rates are gonna get absolutely off the charts improvement right here if you get this right. So. And the key feelings I want you to have as you are doing this is number one, you get that good setup. So we're doing the steering wheel feeling right there and we bring that back in. Now, from here, it is very much gonna feel like your left arm is staying connected to the body and running through the shoulders. If you start to see the left arm get too high, what you're gonna notice is as you go back, you're gonna knock the alignment stick there or as you come down, if you get in a good position and spin your chest, you're gonna fire it too steep on the way down and hit the alignment stick. So what this is gonna teach you is number one, how to keep the left arm connected to the body and how to rotate more around and then around back into a good position. Now it's all well and good me saying this, but let me show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna set up to the ball here. I'm gonna give this a nice around, around sensation, get that good setup position in there and let's see what this swing looks like. And as you can see, that is a beautiful high draw there, nice and shallow around me, and that is gonna allow me to get into the best possible position. So we know the concept, we know the setup, and now we know a great drill to help us get into that backswing position. How do we take this to the golf course? Well, first off, we gotta keep it as simple as possible. I like to tell golfers, look, it's okay to have a setup thought and then a swing thought. So here's your setup thought, very simple. It's just feeling like your trail arm is slightly lower than your lead arm. Again, if you wanna focus more on the shoulders, a great way of doing this is put less emphasis where your feet are pointing and focus on maybe pointing your shoulders just slightly right at target because if you're in that position chances are your trail arm is going to be slightly lower than your lead arm and that's going to promote more of an around swing. Now there are two different ways you can think of an actual swing thought. The first way is imagine somebody is holding an alignment stick just like that last drill at an angle right here and if you use that imagination you've then got to go right I've got to be able to swing under it on the way back producing a flat back swing and swing under it on the way down, producing an on-plane shallower downswing, which will allow me to then hit a little bit more up on it and get really good ball flights. Now, the second way is focusing a little bit more on the left arm, because I do see some golfers, they go here, and their left arm goes very disconnected and gets upwards. So, kind of a representation of the glove under the left arm drill, what I want you to do is grab a bit of clothing, twist it to make a ball and then pinch it with your left arm like so. So now my left arm is connected and if I let it go, I will feel all that tension go. So here, twist it, connect it. Now, as I swing, I wanna feel like I can keep that tension in under that left arm in the back swing and in the down swing, and then I can let it go in the follow through. So you've got two different swing thoughts there, but doesn't matter which one you pick, hopefully both of them will produce the same results. And here's what it should look like if you do get them right. Now, if you need more one-to-one -one help with your game, maybe you're struggling with other parts of your game, offer online coaching all on the Skillist platform. The link is down below, as well as a free practice guide to get your hands on that down below. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, drop them down below.